Hi there, welcome to the latest episode of my 10 minute moan. And the topic of this 10 minute moan is Nicola Sturgeon, who looks like she's been telling his lies all along. I'm perfectly honest. So what's happened is yesterday, um, she, the SNP government eventually released a load of redacted Freedom of Information papers that they'd refused to release previously. And these papers were about the uh, Alex Salmon's investigation of uh, harassment and how the SNP government dealt with that. And they were specifically asked if they could provide the legal advice that they had been given before they decided to pursue Alex Salmon. And I think they just got all the information that we all expected that we knew about it. They got legal advice telling them not to pursue it because the likelihood was they would lose. Yet the SNP in their wisdom challenged it all the way to the court of sessions, the highest court in Scotland, to try and protect passing out information that we all kind of guessed. The reason we guessed is simple. If the information wasn't as damning as it was, then they would have released it. But um, this has been going on for about two or three years now, which is perfectly normal for the SNP. And it's cast doubts over Nicola Sturgeon's uh, claims. We previously that she, an independent inquiry, had um, found her not guilty of all charges. When it looks like she has indeed broken ministerial code on several occasions. So I'm going to do two things. I'm going to read out a newspaper article about it. And then I'm going to read a tweet about it, which is quite good. It sort of summarises the claims that she broke the ministerial code, breaks them down to which code and how she done it. And uh, I'll give you my opinions as we go along. Well, my opinions are quite simple to guess. I think she's a liar and a crook. Now, yeah, there's a big word that I suppose lawyers, if uh, was telling me <coughs> any interest, would have a field day with. Um, so... I'm going to use the mail and talk about oh, the mail, the mail, this, the mail, that, the mail, that. Yeah, what they're telling is the truth. So forget who wrote it. Let's just stop that nonsense, right? When the, when the actual truth's in it uh, and the information in it don't suit your narrative. So they went to the headline, there's demands for Nicola Sturgeon to face new probe over her role in salmon sex claims investigation. There's a new call for inquiry into whether former First Minister broke ministerial code. As documents reveal, SNP ministers gave inaccurate evidence and ignored evidence from lawyers. Demands have been made for a fresh inquiry into First Minister Nicola Sturgeon's conduct, conduct during the investigation into sex claims against Alex Salmond. The calls for a new probe into whether Ms Sturgeon broke the ministerial code come as critics say new documents released after a lengthy legal battle shed doubt on the initial findings into her behaviour. And I keep remembering her going, well, I've been cleared by an independent inquiry. And she was quite, I don't know. I just thought she was trying to oversell it for day one. Turns out it was right. So, um, where did the story get to? An acting ALBA party leader, Kenny McCaskill, also claims the records revealed a civil servant may have been compromised during the first investigation. These are pretty big claims. But that doesn't mean they're not true. Scottish Information Commissioner David Hamilton has pledged to write to Scotland's top civil servant in light of the concerning revelations. Now I've recently been following Mr David Hamilton, the Scottish Information Commissioner on Twitter. X. Doesn't seem to like them. Doesn't seem to like them. I'm not sure if it's SNP or not. That's, to be honest with you. But he doesn't like the way they deal with information. That's perfectly evident from his um, social media postings. And also his predecessor on the way out the job done a review and said that the SNP government's freedom of information um, department was not fit for purpose. These two people who run our information commission in Scotland, both the predecessor and current, seem very, very scathing. And, um, and their uh, opinions of the SNP and the government. Anyway, it comes as SNP ministers were yesterday forced to release the documents which detail the legal advice they received before an unsuccessful challenge at the Court of Session which cost taxpayers 30 
thousand pounds. The documents show ministers ignored legal advice in a bid to cover up a report into Ms Sturgeon's conduct. Ministers gave inaccurate information to the Scottish Information Commissioner. That's serious. Serious concerns were raised about the operational independence of the civil servant charged with helping James, Ham James Hamilton, an independent advisor tasked with investigating Ms Sturgeon. These things are pretty serious. Last night, Mr McCaskill said they have gone to great lengths to avoid publishing this information. Now we know why. They were warned by their own lawyers there was insufficient distance between the government and what was meant to be an independent inquiry. It casts long shadow over its findings, some of which remain redacted. There is surely a prima facie case for in inquiry to be rerun, as this undermines public confidence in both the inquiry process and its conclusions. In a joint statement to SNP Stallhearts, MSP Fergus Ewan and ex-MP Joanna Cherry said the revelations raised serious questions over who the Scottish Government was trying to protect. I don't think it does. I think it's dead obvious who they're trying to protect, and her name's Sturgeon. Meanwhile, Tory MSP Liam Kerr wasting money on an appeal likely to fail demonstrates utter contempt for the taxpayers by the SNP. The saga began in 2019 when Miss Sturgeon referred herself to James Hamilton amid claims that she had misled Parliament over the date she was told about harassment complaints about Mr Salmond, who died later, earlier this month. James Hamilton then pr pr produced a report which said that although Miss Sturgeon had not broken the ministerial code, she had given an accurate and complete narrative of events to MSPs. So although it didn't completely abolish her, it did say that she'd no broken the ministerial code, and that's the thing that Sturgeon grabbed on for years and just said, well, an independent inquiry said I didn't. What she forgot to tell us was also was quite scathing about giving, her giving an incomplete narrative of events, i.e. you didn't tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. A member of the public, Benjamin Harop, I hope I've um, pronounced your surname right there, sir, and what a job you've done, later submitted a Freedom of Information request to the government asking for all written evidence handed to James Hamilton during the investigation. The government insisted it did not hold the information as it was officially held by James Hamilton. But after the case was referred to the Scottish Information Commissioner, the transparencies are ruled that the information was held on Scottish government systems. Threatened with the prospect of revealing the documents, ministers scrambled legal teams to try and overturn the decision. New documents released after legal advice to pursue a costly campaign to withhold information from the public. The records show that the government was advised in February 23 by James Muir, KC, that there was reasonable prospect of success in appealing the Commissioner's ruling that it did hold the information asked for. John Swinney, the then Deputy First Minister, was inclined to appeal the decision, according to one memo. However, fears were later raised about the government's submissions to the information watchdog, which appeared to be inaccurate, according to Mr Muir. He said that while there remain reasonable prospects in an appeal, the additional information makes success less likely, adding, I do not consider the prospects as particularly strong. Concerns were raised about the independence of the civil servant charged with helping James Hamilton in his inquiries, named the Secretary with the council writing it was unfortunate more distance was not enforced between the Secretariat and Scottish Ministers. Yesterday, David Hamilton, the Scottish Information Commissioner, said, we have now learnt ministers were advised that prospects of winning the appeal were not strong and indeed diminished as advice developed. It is therefore frustrating to know that my scarce resources were absorbed in an appeal. The applicant's request for information to which this appeal related was delayed for two and a half years, which is unacceptable. And as a result, the substantive information initially requested still remains under investigation. I will be corresponding with the Permanent Secretary to share these concerns. The Scottish Government said the material shows ministers took decisions based on appropriate analysis of the legal considerations. 
This includes discussions with Lord Advocate, who was content near their proper grounds for appeal. This is where it gets interesting because Lord Advocate, who's the top of the prosecution service as well, is on the Scottish Government Cabinet. So what they're saying is, although the information may suggest that lawyers said they wouldn't be able to do it or wouldn't, get, wouldn't be successful, the Lord Advocate was content there was grounds for appeal. It would be very interesting to hear the Lord Advocate's version of events. So that's the story, right? So what 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 parts of the ministerial code has Nicola Sturgeon broken? And the question is, did she? Now, there's three different sections of the ministerial code that she may have broken. And the first one is section 101, 1.1. Excuse my ignorance here, I'll try to read. I'll just try and make that a bit bigger. There we go. And 1.1 says... Ministers should resign if they knowingly mislead Parliament. Wow. So, did Nicola Sturgeon mislead Parliament? Well, what they're claiming here is, on five occasions, Sturgeon claimed she found out about the complaints from Salmond himself on the 2nd of April 2018, which appears wrong. On two occasions, Sturgeon claimed that the secret meeting with Jeff Aberdeen was not planned. Jeff Aberdeen was Starman's press uh, guy, or pri pa sorry, personal secretary, private secretary, whatever the title was. On six occasions, she promised full cooperation with inquiry and to release any material requested. And at least once, she claimed to have no knowledge on how the investigation was handled, which appears incorrect as well. At least once, she said she claimed she didn't offer to intervene. So in total, evidence suggests that Sturgeon has misled the Scottish Parliament at least 15 times. Misleading once should see you leave the Parliament. The other thing, suggestion, is Section 2.30. Now, Section 2.30 of the Ministerial Code States ministers must follow legal advice at their earliest possible opportunity. The judicial review was doomed from the onset because of serious flaws in investigation and procedure. From late or possibly earlier, the SNP government were aware of the flaws in its investigation. By mid-December, the SNP government were aware of a numerous of irredeemable mistakes. Sturgeon had dozens of opportunities every day from the 31st of October onwards at the earliest to take a legal, legally correct course of action. The ministerial code would have been broken every time Sturgeon received advice that the government was going to lose the judicial review and continued anyway. There are at least 17 meetings between the Scottish government and the consul. Each of these would be a breach of the ministerial code if Sturgeon knew the advice offered and didn't intervene. The other thing that she suggested that she broke was um, section 4.22. That is, ministerial meetings with external individuals must be recorded. Sturgeon had five discussions with Salmon throughout the summer of 2018. There are no records of what was said at any of these meetings. Both Salmond and the SNP Chief Executive Peter Morell have said the meetings were governmental and not party business. Sturgeon spoke to her chief civil servant about Salmon meetings in early June. But six weeks later, <coughs> she met Salmon again and without an official present or any records taken. In total, she may have breached section 4.22 up to six times by meeting Salmon and his former Chief of Staff in Government Business, and concealing the meetings from government officials. All in all, it's a shit show. And these people have been running our country for 17 years, doing whatever they feel they want to do. And people like that should no longer be in our Hollywood Parliament. This woman doesn't serve anybody now. 
although she should be serving her constituents because she's still an MSP, but she only turns up when we need votes to save her pal's skin. I think she's been three times in the last year, something crazy like that. So she doesn't even do the job. She still draws £71,000 as an MSP on top of her pension for being a previous First Minister and does nothing. Now, people like me have been convinced for a long time that they tell us lies. And it's proven now. And I actually don't care about the rosette colour they wear. That building is full of people like this. And that building deserves to be free of people like this. And that's why come 2026, I'm so passionate about getting voted into that building. And hopefully, regardless of the colour of the rosette, we get the majority of people in that building not want to tell us lies, not want to just talk about independence all the time and bloody foreign policy that doesn't actually, you can't deal with in that building. They've had 17 years there talking about stuff they can't deal with and squandering their own money and they don't deserve to be there. Scotland deserves far better than it's had for 17 years. And if I have the misfortune of serving in that building with any of these characters, I promise the people of Scotland I will not give them a minute's peace while they're there and listen to their nonsense. And I'll go and I'll dig and I'll dig and I'll dig again and make sure every single thing that these cretins have done to our country is exposed in good time. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up. If you've not already done so, please hit the subscribe notification button. Put your comments below and let me know what you think of the content. But most importantly of all, if you're, as long as you're no Nicola Sturgeon or these dirty, lying, thieving, yes, thieving articles that have been trying to supposedly serve the Scottish people in this parliament for 17 years, not you, but... Everyone else! Have a great day. Get it by now.